Hi friends, I hope everyone is doing great and as always I'm grateful for your precious time. So please continue to share and like these videos and spread the light of Torah. The duty to spread light and truth is ever more incumbent upon us as sadly statistics show that less and less people believe in God. And so it literally and really should come as no surprise to us that the world is getting darker day by day. Just look at what's going on. And I'm afraid it will only get worse with the talk of recession and food shortages, which we have to take really seriously. According to Wells Fargo Investment, the recession has already begun. So why is the world getting darker? Why? For the same reason it always has, because we are blocking the source of all light, God. And it's really a shame that in a world where we have everything to make us smarter with all kinds of technology and innovations, which can really help us get closer to God and learn more about him through internet classes, through YouTube, Zoom, Instead, we're becoming a lot more stupid. We're letting ourselves get sucked into the black hole of today's temptations. We spend such a ridiculous amount of time on Netflix and TikTok, losing ourselves in the moments, moments that will never come back and moments where there is nothing to be found, only lost. And perhaps we think that with all this technology, who needs God? Alexa, Siri, they respond much quicker to our needs. But spend, I urge you, an hour learning a bit about physics or quantum physics, and you will see that God is in everything. Not that we need, need their approval necessarily, but even the great physicists such as Einstein and Newton believed in God. Newton in particular believed in a monotheistic God, a creator of the universe whose existence could not be denied. Reminds me of a joke about an atheist. An atheist says to God, we used to need you, but we don't need you anymore because now with technology, everything that you can do, we can do too. And God says, okay, really? Can you make a man out of dust? And the atheist replies, yes, yes, indeed we can. Really, God says, so show me. So the atheist starts to gather up some dust and God says, oh, no, 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 not with my dust. Quite unfortunately, our generation of geniuses has dust in their eyes because a new Gallup poll does reveal that belief in God is at an all-time low, which reminds me of another joke. An atheist is in a restaurant and he asks the waiter, what's this fly doing in my soup? And the waiter replies, he's praying. The atheist rolls his eyes and he says, okay, yeah, very funny. Okay, I can't eat this soup, just take it back. You see, the waiter replies, the fly's prayers were answered. My friends, the fly's prayers were answered. Meant to be a joke, but sadly, the joke is on us. Because we too are in hot water. But to whom do we turn? The stock market, marijuana, the government, to food, to addiction, to exercise? Where do we turn? As it says in the prayer, Alenu, they bow to vanity and emptiness and pray to a God, and that's God with a small g, which cannot save them. Even the evil king of Israel, Menashe, who spurned God in the most vile ways, and he was literally thrown into a cauldron of water by his enemies. And when they turned up the heat and it became too hot, he turned away from his useless idols. 
And he called out to the one and only God, Hashem, the God of Israel, to save him. And he did. In the book of Isaiah, like in Isaiah the prophet, it's written, an ox knows his owner, and a donkey knows his master's crib. But Israel, Israel does not know its master. God's children do not know who's in charge. Isaiah wasn't wrong. Even a Pew poll of 2019 reveals that Jews believe less than others in God and his Torah. And I can't help but think of the incredibly powerful ancient Jewish text prayer, Perek Shira, which is said to bring blessings and protection to those who say it. In it, each element of creation, from the celestial to the animals, sing praises to God. The earth, the earth says, the earth and everything in it are Hashem's. The grass says, may the honor of Hashem endure forever. The rat, how much lower can you go? The rat says, let every soul praise ka, hallelujah, ka. The dog says, come let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before Hashem, our maker. And yes, even the fly, even the fly says the word of God shall endure forever. But the human being, the human being says, nah, I don't believe in God. When God created the world, man was made in God's image. He was meant to be master over the animals and they were meant to fear man. But as man sinned and lost his godly light, the animals stopped being afraid and now it appears that the animals and nature are smarter than we are. They serve God unwaveringly, while man, man who was born to be master, man turned himself into a slave, a slave to his animal passions, passions which have no need or place for God. Like employees who get lazy and distracted on the job, we too have forgotten why we are here. We are here for one reason alone, to emulate God. That's our job. God's first act was to create light because there can be no life without it. And we are created to do the same, to create light by following God's Torah because there is no life without it. God wants a dwelling place here on earth. It's written in Exodus 25, 8, they shall make for me a sanctuary and I will dwell in them. It all of a sudden became plural because in them means in our homes, in our hearts, and in our lives. When we have a guest, we know how to clean our houses really good, polish here and there, put new towels, how to make them welcome. And God is always a guest and we need to clean up our lives if we want him to stick around. But we haven't, and the world is growing dark. When he made the world, he took the spiritual and concretized it, made it physical, and our job is to take the physical and make it spiritual. Every step we take in life has the potential to be holy ground. Every moment has the opportunity to be elevated. Imagine each moment as a walnut, and we have the choice to crack it open and release its light. Every moment is a choice to serve God and to redirect our destiny and to illuminate the world. In this week's parasha, Chukat, we read about Moses and a rock. And it's with great irony and curiosity that we discover that it is not a pharaoh or smashing the tablets upon which the Ten Commandments were engraved or letting the spies go in and scout out the promised land, or Moses getting a little too confident when he speaks with God. Nor is it his initial reluctance to be a deliverer that prevents Moses from entering the promised land. It was a rock. 
And that teaches us literally that no challenge should be regarded as a minor or irrelevant. A rock! A rock stopped Moses from entering the promised land. Literally, Moses was between a rock and a hard place. And the hard place was that the Jews, once again, they were complaining. They had no water. So God told Moses, go and speak to the rock and it will bring forth water. So what does Moses do? Instead of listening to God and speaking to the rock, he hits the rock twice and the water comes pouring out. What is God's response? Since you did not have faith in me to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly to the land which I have given them. Moses is not allowed into the promised land because he hit a rock. Friends, every step we take can be holy ground. How we get from point A to point B tells God exactly who we are. Firstly, a man of Moses' stature and greatness, he had no right to show anger or to lose control, and none of us do. And also he violated God's instructions. But we've all heard the expression, you can't squeeze water from a stone. What did he want from Moses? And why did God want water to come from a rock? In order to teach the Israelites that even nature, even nature responds to God's will. Even a rock. In our own lives, we often say, it's not in my nature to be religious and Shabbos and kosher and do all these things that God wants for me. It's not me. It's just not me. I can't do it. But we see here in this parasha that even a rock is ready to serve the will of God and go against its nature. And if an inanimate rock will obey, how much more so can we humans reconstitute ourselves to serve Hashem. It says in the Mishnah in Perkei Avot, make God's will your will so that he will make your will like his will. Nullify your will before his will so that he will nullify the will of others before you. My friends, in the Torah, we see problem after problem when the people don't adhere to God's will. So it's no wonder that today's world is a mess and we're seeking, sinking deeper and deeper into confusion. Who's here to extricate us from the mess and the disaster? We have no religious leaders, political leaders, anyone who can really come in and salvage the moment. We've turned off the light and have the audacity to question why the world has become such a dark place. In Proverbs, it is written that a single mitzvah is the light and can dispel much darkness. And it's incumbent upon us now in this time of great darkness to do mitzvah, to bring life to the world, to elevate the ground beneath our feet, to be trailblazers in goodness and kindness. Shut off Netflix, shut off TikTok, all these time-wasting, energy-sapping distractions that are just basically taking blankets and putting them over our heads so we don't have to deal with life. But if we do not deal with life, then life will deal with us. And where it's going now, well, you really have to have your head under a blanket not to see where it's going now. Shabbat Shalom.